afternoon and welcome everybody to our latest Wellington PMO Academy webinar. Um, this is all about getting your PMO ready for the summer holiday. Uh, if any of you are going anywhere, just to make sure. So we're really considering that quite often when we're getting ready for a summer break, we're kind of packing and we're selecting our own reading list, um, but we don't really tend to think much about the PMO. So today we're going to really talk about what you can do to get your PMO ready for staff being away, stuff not getting done as normal, and also give you some recommended reading uh, so that you can relax on your holiday whilst also uh, kind of improve your PMO skills. Uh, those of you that have just joined, uh, you won't have seen, we are using Mentimeter, so I will be asking uh, for your collaboration uh, and your input into some of the questions that we're going to be uh, looking at to get to know you a bit and also start thinking now about um, how or what tips you have or books or reading for people that have maybe helped you in your PMO career. So we're going to start off with introductions just in case you don't know Wellington uh, or me uh, and then we're going to talk about some of the impact that having a summer break can have on our PMOs. Um, we'll then move into some of the tactics that you can use to really prepare your PMO for the next couple of months and some recommended reading um, as well. So if, in case you don't know me, my name's Emma. I'm the Director of Consulting Services at Wellington. Um, I'm a member of lots of different project management associations from all over the world. Uh, I'm also our Corporate Social Responsibility and Sustainability Lead here at Wellington. Um, importantly, uh, I run and organise Future PMO, which is our one-day conference uh, for PMO people. Uh, we host that normally in London. Uh, this year, we are replacing it with a learning event uh, for PMO people and you can find me on social media uh, if you search for PMO Ninjas uh, you'll be able to find me on there. Um, Wellington, um, we're a uh, project portfolio and work management consultancy firm. Um, our head office is in Windsor in the UK. We also have offices in Dublin and in Madrid uh, in Spain and um, we even have uh, partners in Costa Rica to kind of help us to deliver some PMO, some of our PMO wisdom out into kind of the Latin America side of the world. Our mission is to enable our clients to make a step change uh, in their project management maturity and their work management maturity. And we do that through a number of um, different streams. So we work through technology, we do training, consultancy, and we also really keep abreast of what's going on with the industry through articles, our research that we, we, um, we do every year as well. We have a number of um, accreditations and partnerships. Um, that we maintain, that we're really proud of. Um, uniquely, we are the only Microsoft Gold partner that is also an accredited training provider by the APM, the Association for Project Management, which in the UK is the chartered body for the, for the industry. Um, so that makes us quite unique in the marketplace. It means we can talk to our clients about systems, but also we can look at you know, PMO and project management capability, both at organizational and individual level. We are also um, really passionate about PMO, so you can see that hopefully with our PMO Academy. Uh, we are part of the PMO Global Alliance and we've recently become accredited as a leader for PMO training uh, by Course Conductor, who are uh, an independent assessor of training courses. Uh, you can have a look at our clients. Uh, we have a lot of case studies. Uh, if you are interested, uh, at wellington.co.uk forward slash case studies. And you can see our clients range uh, in from all different industries. So we've even worked with Microsoft to develop some, some, some of their project management capability. Um, so you can see there we've got pretty much every industry covered. So for those of you that have recently joined us, I think we should have uh, everybody on the call. If you go to menti.com on your phone or on your laptop and you put in this code, it will ask you a, a series of questions. So the first one is pretty simple. Where are you joining us from? I think most people have already filled that one in. And what this does is it allows us to get to know you a little bit um, so we can actually see who we've got on the call, and where you're joining us from. Um, I'm going to leave that one there for a second until, and I'm going to move on to our next one, which is really to find out about your role. Um, so yes, we know that you're joining us from different areas, but what is your typical role um, that you tend to do on a day-to-day -day basis? Are you a PMO? Uh, are you a project manager? Are you a sponsor or a project leader? 
um, or maybe something else and you're just interested in this particular topic today. So I'm going to give you a minute just to do that and then we'll see where what role typically people tend to do. So we can see most of us are in PMO, so we're in good company um, and uh, we've got some project manager project management as well um, to kind of maybe give their PMO a little bit of a hand in terms of getting ready for the summer break. So I'm going to leave that question open so that um, different people can um, go and answer that. And while we do that, we're going to talk about what the summer break can do to PMOs. Um, and there are kind of five key impact areas that we see when people suddenly are not in the office quite as much, uh, when we see that people have extended time off. Um, and the first is kind of the pause of internal activities. And these are the kind of activities that we, we do in terms of continuous improvement within the PMO itself. So most PMOs want to be the very best they can be. So we tend to do lots of different kinds of improvement activities, whether that is to do with process, whether it's to do with the training that we offer. And really that, that, that pause can have a real negative impact on that work in the sense that when we come back to work in September, um, actually they're not as important anymore because we all know that coming back to work after the summer holiday is, is quite hard at the best of times and there will be other priorities, different things that we suddenly need to pick up, stuff that's happened that might have changed our world slightly. Um, so that pause of internal activities is something that we really need to consider um, before we go away. Can we get our activities to a particular point so that they remain uh, actionable when we come back in September? The other impact point is around some of the conversations that we're having with our potential customers or stakeholders of the PMO. We're always trying to improve the way that we are building relationships with our customers. And this is something that can also have a real impact in the sense that when we come back in September, actually those conversations are overtaken by something else that's happening. Um, so again, can we get those conversations to a point where we can easily pick them up again after a break? One of the things that I recommend is actually get all of the conversations and negotiations that you're having to a point where you have to do something. What this then allows is for you to restart the conversation with something tangible that, that your stakeholders or your customer uh, actually needs and is interested in. So really think about where can we move these conversations to the point where I need to deliver something in September when we come back. Um, the other uh, area is kind of the lost governance milestones that we find. So project managers are away, sponsors are away, stakeholders are away, some of, some of our project boards are away. So um, what we tend to find is that we miss governance milestones. So that can have a real impact if we're in an organization that's very heavily regulated in terms of its organizational governance. So we need to find opportunities there. Um, like, can we roll a number of projects together who are all going through a particular gate or an assurance point and we can use the audience once instead of having to use the audience, you know, one this week, one next week, one the next week to try and make sure that we're able to get the right people in the room at least one time um, throughout the summer break. And also, this is a really good time to think about the level of governance that you're applying to projects. And we've seen this with the, the shift to homeworking, uh, where governance is a little bit trickier because we can't just get in a room with people um, so really maybe take a step back and think about is the amount of governance and the type of governance that we're applying to our projects pragmatic enough now knowing that it's harder to get people in a room physically and also virtually sometimes and maybe consider that there's a different way and if you want some help with this kind of governance um uh, topic. We've just released an ebook a couple of weeks ago, which is all about building the right level of governance through categorizing projects. So understanding that if it's, you know, small, medium, large projects, a large project needs a lot of governance, whereas maybe the smaller ones, at the moment, we're forcing them through that exact same profile of governance and life cycle. And maybe we can be a little bit smarter. And this is a really good time to do that. That ebook has the recipe in there. So it has everything you need to set something like that up. 
so that you can maybe look at this over the summer and in September try starting with something new, something a little bit more pragmatic. The next one is kind of the change of direction of the company. Uh, we are seeing that lots of companies have had to change direction over the last few months and are looking at their strategy right now. So come September, when we have a lot of new year uh, in terms of financial years, we will find that some of our organizations will need to shift uh, in terms of their strategic focus and the direction that they're going in. So we really need to make sure that that impact doesn't impact the PMO negatively. So we need to ensure that we are as adaptable as we can be, ready to come back and, and, and really support our businesses through whatever change. So, you know, not being too hard on actually that's not part of our role, this is our scope, is maybe look at the services that you're offering. Consider how hard have the last few months been and what's going to be important in the future. And lastly is that loss of focus. Um, we all have that element of work-life balance. We all know if we go away for two weeks and come back, it's really hard to get into that same routine. So we need to, the, one of the biggest impacts is the loss of focus. So one of the things I always say is if you've got in your team people rolling on and off due to holiday time, is maybe you know take some of the principles of agile and create a bit of a roadmap of what we're expecting to happen during this slightly downtime period so that when people are in the office or they are in their virtual office they can see very easily what we need to do so we're not just kind of scrabbling around for different things to do that seem like a good idea let's make it focused let's make it visible you know let's use something like microsoft planner that people have access to and can see that works very simply like a Kanban board so that everybody has that focus whenever they are able to be in the office. So hopefully those impacts make sense. I'm hoping they resound with you. Um, in terms of um, one of the things that we are really, really good at is telling people how important planning is. What we're not really, really good at is applying that ourselves over and over again. Um, so effectively, um, one of the key areas that I wanted to cover is just to remind us, all of us PMO people, about the advantages to actually doing some proper planning and preparation for our PMOs. So some of the benefits of the advantages, it really helps us to visualize the journey. Um, it, if you really do this properly and actually take the time to say, what is the focus over the next six weeks? Um, what do we need to happen? What do we need to build in order to restart those conversations and those continuous improvement? It actually will help you to see the goal. Uh, and that's always a thing, isn't it? If we plan, then we get to reach our goals quicker because we can see it and we can understand the milestones that we have in order to get there. It also is really advantageous because it helps us to prioritize. Um, one of the one of the key top reasons, according to our research, why projects fail is we try and do too much. And that is partly because of our human nature. We are optimistically biased to think that we can achieve more than we actually can. So we all suffer from that. Um, so it's really important to be able to, once we have that journey visualized, to really understand what is the priority and realistically, what can we get done? I'm sure we've all been there when we've had activities and work that we needed to do that um, actually took a lot longer than we were expecting. And that is because of our optimism bias. We are optimistically biased all the time as humans. Uh, the other advantage is it actually helps us to make informed decisions about what we're going to do, what we're going to start, what we're not going to do, rather than just use what a lot of PMOs do, which is a bit of a gut feel let's actually have a conversation about it and make decisions as to what we're going to do, what and where. Next uh, is kind of about you. You know, we all want to make an impact. Um, and that's certainly where, you know, my job satisfaction comes from is that I feel when I feel like I've made an impact and, and I've achieved something positive for the business and for my clients. And by doing this, you will be able to have that satisfaction that I trust my team and I know that I can, you know, leave them with the prep work that we've done and we can, we know we can get things done. At the same time, it's going to help you to relax. Um, I don't know about you, but I found the last few months that 
there are some days where I work, you know, an insane amount of time because I'm really, really focused. Um, and that's a good thing. But at the same time, we do need to take that time out. So lots of people aren't taking holidays because we're not going abroad and things like that. But you can still take some time for yourself and, and really kind of just take a step back from the level of work that, that we're all doing at the moment from home to really get that work life balance um, a little bit more balanced. And if you do all of this, it will actually help you to be calm and to be present with your in your vacation, in your holiday time with your family and friends and whoever else you're with, instead of thinking and worrying about what's going on back at the office or the virtual office. So um, next, uh, we're going to talk about some tactical things that you can do to really help your get your PMO ready. So the first one and the, one of the really important ones is do a bit of accounting. Understand where your portfolio is at, understand the status of the project, where the risks are, uh, the, you know, the, in terms of uh, how soon they're likely to happen that we're looking at the ones that, you know, if they, these were to happen in the next few weeks, we need to make sure we have a plan for them and really understand where that is and also where your uh, improve, internal improvement activities are. So really do a true portfolio accounting, looking at projects, programs, but also your business as usual activities in terms of actually some of this stuff isn't going to happen for the next few weeks and be realistic about that. Once you've done that, you can start thinking about the roadmap. So I mentioned it earlier, use some of the agile principles, make it visible, make it easy for people to understand. This is when we're doing a project board because we can get three or four different projects that are due um, into there. And we can help to make a collective decision with the right people one time whilst we know we've got them. Also detail in your roadmap some of those uh, conversation enablers so that we want to be able to pick up a conversation with somebody in September or whenever they're back from their vacation. And what are we expecting people to, to manage from an internal perspective? This is also a really, really great time to look at what lessons you've learned over the last half of the year. So if you have a lessons learned database, uh, this is an awesome time to extract everything and let's do a bit of an analysis are there any trends anything that actually we should really help with this or we should fix something with with some of these lessons is there lots of stuff that we need to communicate that we've done well uh, from our lessons learned if you don't have a lessons learned database this is a great time to set one up because we're constantly getting feedback and lessons both from projects and programs but also from the way that we as PMO are interacting with our customers. So this is the perfect time when we've usually got a little bit of downtime to really analyze the information that we have. What have we learned? What haven't we learned that we should be learning, which is really important. But also, if there are any trends, what can we do about it to make the world a little bit better in our reality? Next uh, are set the objectives. Make sure that your team and your customers know have expectation of what's going to happen, what we're going to achieve and what we're not going to achieve. So almost what's in scope and what's out of scope for the next couple of months. Because like I say, it's not like when we come back, we can just pick everything up exactly as it was. There will be other things, other priorities that if we're not careful, will overtake a lot of the good stuff that we've been doing for the last half of a year. And lastly, community if you have a community in place you're running events workshops forums have a look at what you can continue to offer um both because we commit to that if you've committed to it we should be running those we accept we might have a reduced audience but what you might find is that the people who have been on the periphery of your community maybe quite quiet people not very extroverted you might find that those are the people that get more involved now because there isn't quite as big an audience. So this is a really good time to kind of engage those people who have been on the periphery of the work that you're doing and really get them to be able and comfortable and, and in a safe space, show their interest for the work that the PMO is doing. So make sure that you don't just get rid of all of the events that you were planning to do. If you have forums, if you have lunches and munches, lunch and munch sessions, if you have workshops, then don't just kill them all and assume that people aren't going to attend. 
it doesn't matter if you've got two people, it's still a good use of your time if those two people are engaged. Um, so do look at the community um, and also look at different opportunities. You know, is there anybody that wants to be involved in that lessons learned analysis who are around and have a bit of downtime? Give people an opportunity to get involved. So those are some tactical ideas of things that you can do to get your PMO ready. The next thing I wanted to briefly talk about was a couple of webinars that we've done recently, which actually provide you with tools. Um, so the first one, and again, this is a really good time to do this now, is to MOT your PMO. So um, MOTing the PMO is exactly like MOTing your car. So we're looking at the PMO from a number of different perspectives to understand how well we're actually performing. And it really is a really useful thing to do right now because we are potentially looking at the services that we offer our business. Um, the tool that you can download, uh, you can see the link just there. You can personalize it. It does allow you to personalize it. It's in Excel, so it's really easy to use. There's no code and it will give you a graph like you can see here that you can then show some of the areas that you maybe could improve on. Um, on our website, on that page, you can watch the webinar back. It explains how to use the tool and you can also download it directly from that page as well. Completely free um, to do that. And the other one as part of our MOT series um, is around your technology. So the first one is really looking at how the PMO operates. Um, and this one is kind of, it's more of a quiz style, um, but it, it is again, a free tool, um, which does a bit of an analysis and asks you a number of questions around the technology that you're currently using and what your life cycle looks like. And what it will do is, um, full disclosure, it is focused on Microsoft technology because we are a Microsoft Gold partner, but what it will do is it will guide you through uh, a number of questions and at the end it will tell you what technology is most likely to suit your reality. Whether you're super mature and you need you know, lots and lots of governance through to actually we just need to manage the day-to-day -day. Uh, we don't have lots of project managers instead we have what we call accidental project managers um, who tend to be SMEs who are asked to do a piece of work turns into a project so um, again using the link that you can see there you can watch the webinar back and that will explain how to use it and what all the results mean so that's some additional stuff that you can do that I highly recommend you do either on your own or I like to do this kind of work with my team so we get more of a consensus um, to get a perspective on how your PMO is doing at the moment and some of the areas that it can improve. Now if we move past the PMO one of the things that I wanted to do is to help you um, to kind of maybe look at how you can develop yourself personally. Uh, and I found four books which I find really interesting, some oldies but goodies, uh, some are a bit newer and looking at different things. Um, the first one is kind of lean versus agile versus design thinking. We're all always talking about the impact of agile and lean uh, and lots of other methods. And if you work in the software area, software development, you will find that development teams are using a mixture of lean, agile and design thinking. And as PMO, it can be a bit scary because a lot of these methods, they kind of step away from our more traditional ways of working. I found this book really useful to give me a perspective on all three. And it really kind of sets apart the differences and what's what the principles are of each one. So I really, if you work in that space, if you work in the IT or the development space, I think this is a really good book for you to download onto your Kindle and, and take away on holiday or read in the garden. The next one is the new One Minute Manager. So it's been updated. Um, this is by Ken Blanchard, who we probably all know. Um, and it, it really did turn the management world upside down. And lots and lots of people have used this to find efficiencies in their day to day. And I think given that a lot of us are working from home, that's maybe one of the areas where we struggle is to find the balance of efficiency for work, but also being at home, which brings its own challenges. Uh, the third one is uh, Harvard Business Reviews. Uh, if any of you follow me on social media, I do share a lot of Harvard Business Reviews um, articles and white papers because I think they're really, really great. And as change management is growing in the world of PMO in terms of importance, 
Uh, this is a great view of 10 of their must, their clusters must reads on change management. Um, we've seen in our recent research that we published two weeks ago that this is becoming more and more important for PMOs is understanding the impact of change on our people. And then the last one, uh, How to Be a Productivity Ninja, is one of my favourite books ever. <laughs> and genuinely, it changed the whole way that I work. And I recommend it to almost everybody that I see. Uh, if you're kind of struggling and feeling a little bit overwhelmed with the amount of things like emails and tasks that you've got to do, um, it will challenge you. Uh, it will challenge you to do things differently, uh, which can be a bit scary. But genuinely, it is, it is the way that I work um, in my day to day. Um, so I, I strongly, strongly recommend it. So now that you know my recommendations, uh, one of the next things I wanted to do was see if you have any recommendations for anybody else on the call. Uh, and it's really around, um, have you read anything that you think is really useful for people that has really helped you, like for me, the How to Be a Productivity Ninja? Um, or have you read an article that you think would be useful? Or do you have any kind of tactics for anybody um, who's actually doing, uh, getting involved within the PMO space that you think actually that would be really useful? So I'm gonna leave that question there so um, it doesn't uh, randomly pop up. Um, and the last, very last question, um, where are you going on holiday? Uh, so are you going on holiday? Are you staying at home? Are you doing something else? um or are you not going on holiday so i'm going to leave that there whilst i finish off this webinar um hopefully you found it very insightful and giving you some ideas around the pmo and how we are not great at kind of eating our own medicine or taking our own medicine i suppose we talk to people about you must plan you must hand things over you must make sure that everything's ready and your project before you go away but we actually don't do very much of that ourselves. So this is really a bit of a, a reminder and a little bit of a kick that if you do have a team that's gonna be in and out of the office over the next six weeks, is to spend the time up front and give them real objectives and real goals for the next few weeks. As always, stay in touch with us. Uh, we are here at your disposal. If you need to run something by us, if you have an idea and you think it's a bit crazy, then absolutely you can get in touch with me directly or with Wellington directly. Uh, and you can, like I said, find me on LinkedIn uh, or Twitter or Facebook as PMO Ninjas. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you for joining us from all over the world. And I hope you have a great holiday and we'll see you soon with a few webinars that we've already got scheduled in September. Thanks, guys. Bye.